let me actually start by playing the devil's advocate myself. So, is this really the right time to talk about scale? Especially scale from a regional context. Scaling for a 600 million people ASEAN market. Is this the right time? Or are the enterprises too far down in the chain to actually see any real impact from the ASEAN integration? So that, I think, should, could be the, the, the leading uh, question for the panelists to, to set the context. Um, we also launched the ASEAN Center Launchpreneurship um, because of the ASEAN economic um, uh, community. But one thing that we, we found, uh, found out really quickly is that the, the political situation, the, um, the democratic uh, situation, economies and everything else is so different across all the ASEAN countries uh, that it's actually very difficult to try to, um, for, for an enterprise to scale to the ASEAN region. The other thing is that because even the AEC is still so new that uh, a lot of lawyers don't even know how to set up the, the, the whole um, entity itself to allow these enterprises to scale to the ASEAN level. Having said that though, I think that you know um, there is a lot of potential and a lot of um, a lot of potential and also at the same time a lot of opportunities that's gonna arise um, from this. So I, I for example I foresee that a lot of um, a lot of manufacturing uh, jobs are gonna move away from China as China now um, uh, it's become more and more expensive to manufacture um, and these things might start going to, to either Vietnam or, or even Burma um, who is a lot closer to, to, to China uh, and, and, and the fact that Burma is kind of like right in the middle of India and, and also China makes it very interesting and attractive as well um, but then having, for Burma to um, achieve that scale then you need all the logistics and all the infrastructure as well so uh, there's a lot of, when you go into granular details of it there's a lot of things that has to be worked out um, but at a macro level, it's definitely very, very exciting. Uh, so Kevin wears two hats. Uh, he works with uh, BOP Hub, which is a huge collaborative convening platform. And of course, they provide a lot of other support to entrepreneurs. Uh, and uh, Kevin is also an entrepreneur himself, and he's running an enterprise called Qualified Rice. Uh, so Kevin, wearing both the hats together, how do you respond to a, to a generic question like that? So I think from the BOP hub had if I'm wearing it, the ecosystem in the ASEAN region is being built up quite nicely. I don't think it's at the best capacity it could be at, but just from the panel you see here today, you can see how governments, investors, the intermediaries, the entrepreneurs are kind of seeing a bit more eye to eye. So you have your students that are coming out of universities who would normally go to your consulting jobs or your finance jobs are taking up the mantle and saying, I'm going to be a social entrepreneur. And then the schools are being able to support them with the courses and the knowledge to be able to do it well from step one. Obviously, they have a learning, a lot of learning to go, which is where a lot of the incubators and the accelerators are coming along to support that. And the investors are seeing pretty, much, uh, pretty well within the scope of this as well. And then you have your governments who are legislatively and financially being able to support this. But if we talk about scale, I don't think that any one social entrepreneur in this region has been able to reach it, especially not even on a national level. So when we're talking about a regional level, I think it's very difficult for one individual or one organization to do it. Because if they do, you're essentially making them a multinational company. And it doesn't seem that any one person is able to get there. But however, I think we're talking about scale in, in the area of having social impact by many people. So the sharing of ideas and the business models and the concepts between the different countries, I think is where you'll be able to really get that. And just by the kind of different countries we have here, I think we have uh, four to five different countries represented to show that the sharing ideas are going to happen. I think I was talking to Gihan earlier and he was saying how Magic was discussing, I had a chat with one of our good friends in Singapore, Base, which is uh, basically a counterpart of Magic in Singapore. And they're talking about moving entrepreneurs like boot camps where they send Malaysian entrepreneurs to Singapore, Singaporean entrepreneurs to Malaysia. And I think it's really these activities that are going to have like real impact and learnings for this region. Let me just in the interest of controversy suggest that there are some there's some language here that if you're expecting it to lead to scale, won't. So one example would be inclusive business. So inclusive business will never lead to scale. Uh, inclusive business is about what the large company wants 
that the small company delivers. The company running the show is already scaled. The company delivering will never scale based on doing what the big company wants. Not, not significantly. You can become a decent SME, but you're, you're not going to become a large enterprise. So if you assume that those two are related, they're not only not related, they're diametric opposites. Now, if you want to get to scale, you need to have a situation where the organization driving the show is the social enterprise. And they're driving the show because they know how to deploy the resources much better than anybody else knows how to deploy the resources. And it's that ability to deploy the resources more effectively that attracts the other players to the play. And the more resources the model attracts, the more scale potential there is. And so anything where the social enterprise isn't running the show tells you one of two things. Either it isn't a good enough model to be running the show, in which case it's not going to scale, or the way in which support is provided by the larger organizations doesn't allow for that, which is very common. And they think they're doing the right thing because they think they're smarter, but they're not. So, again, you need to think about, in your area, who are the organizations that know how to deploy the resources better than anybody else? You need to find those organizations, and that's where you'll find scale. So, interested in people's comments. When we talk about investment and innovation, BCG recently released a report on the landscape of social enterprises in Indonesia. And in that report, they mentioned about how much impact investment has been made in the country. And it's actually very small. Uh, I don't know what kind of methodology they use, but it's uh, around $14 million. And if you compare to a country like India, where probably more than a billion dollars is running, it's a very small uh, number. And going back to the questions of finding unicorn, I think for investors, uh, impact investors, especially in the Asian countries, when we look at the uh, uh, impact investment that has been made with such a small amount, and also that uh, even in the tech sector, they have been growing very big in the past few years, it's, it's been a big challenge to find uh, something that we so call a unicorn. So uh, the approach that is more realistic for investors will be to continue looking at uh, certain sectors. Uh, there's some sectors that are more likely to produce companies that can scale up across the region. I will say the, the first one will be probably education, which is a service sector. Um, but uh, it's, uh, and I believe I, other impact investors also currently don't uh, try to deliberately find such an investment. Uh, just reflecting on the question of scale. Again, just to ask the question, why is it scale? Now, from an investor point of view, people are obviously trying to kind of reduce the transaction cost of the investment. So scale is important from an investor angle, that you don't want to do 350 deals, you want to do one deal. Right? So 350 would achieve the same scale as one. Now the one, one thing I think we need to think about, and maybe tie in, is how do we develop and rethink uh, the development of the ecosystem and accelerate the incubators within it, where effectively investors would be investing in them as aggregating agents. So, so I, I don't think in the region, in the next five to seven years, you can potentially find, apart from maybe a few fintechs that might provide uh, financial service solutions and perhaps ed tech solutions around education. Beyond that, I think in a whole range of social, uh, social impact kind of investors, uh, social enterprises, I don't think they're going to find massive solutions. Um, so what do we do from a sort of impact investment market? Uh, something that we've been thinking around uh, is how do we create that ecosystem where as smaller players engage with incubators and accelerators, the 
the fees and the returns are coming through those the, the ecosystem rather than through the investments into single enterprises. And that may be the model that might emerge in ASEAN rather than the model that traditionally people have tried to see in India and Australia, where large scale was important. Uh, and I simply say from a purely, so as an institutional economist, that if you look at other parts of the world, Southeast Asia is primarily a region of very small organizations, even businesses. Um, and there is nothing to suppose that social enterprises will eschew that institutional landscape, but suddenly you will have massive ones emerging. From a political angle as well, from governments, if you look at what happened after the financial crisis, the large companies went down, and the, the region were built up again because of small companies. It wasn't because of large companies. And given that the demand in the northern economies are low, the, so the idea of large companies suddenly emerging on large social enterprises, I question that. So I think from a public policy angle, I think governments are interested in a small organization where you spread the base of social impact uh, as well as business. Uh, and you also reduce the potential vulnerability of what happens in the system when there is a, there is a shock to the system in terms of a financial shock, shock or whatever else. So I think the future is really in smaller scale, but large enough.